Marissa Rose here. Okay, so not too long ago, I posted an art hacks video with uh, tips and tricks for artists of all levels, and um, there weren't that many on there, so it's been a while, and I've thought of a lot more different uh, tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you guys. So, um, I know this video says it's an art hacks video, which most of it is, but um, a lot of things I say will be tips and tricks as well. So, just, you know, because last time in the comments, a couple of people said, oh, well, these are really hacks and more tips and tricks. Um, it all kind of falls together in just general things that will help you improve as an artist. A lot of these tips and tricks might be kind of obvious, but for beginners, they could be really helpful. So I figured I'd just include everything because you never know what might help. Well, we might as well get started. So here are my artist hacks, tips, and tricks. So this first set of things I'm going to cover is going to be tips and tricks and hacks for sketching and preparation of your pieces. If you have an idea for a picture you want to paint but you're not quite sure how you're going to do it, try sketching out a bunch of small thumbnail sketches first. This will allow you to make a bunch of small drawings so you don't have to spend a bunch of time on it where you can sketch out exactly where you're going to place everything in your piece. Once you get your composition, it's a lot easier to start working on your final product full size. Use mechanical pencils for sketching. I've been drawing pretty much my whole life and for some reason I never thought to use mechanical pencils until I was around 17 or 18. For some reason, a lot of artists don't really think of mechanical pencils as art tools. Um, I would use them here and there if it was all I had, but I never used them just for sketching all the time. I would use pencils I had to sharpen, and it just was a nightmare having to constantly sharpen it down all the time. Who wants that? Mechanical pencils are great for saving you time. That is a given. And not to mention, they're super affordable. I've been using the same 30 pack of mechanical pencils for about two years now, and I got them for like $3 at a back to school sale. I don't think there's anything else I like sketching with more than a mechanical pencil. In my last art hack video, I talked about how you can use a window to trace your sketches. Well, if your arm gets tired holding it up on the window glass, or if it's just plain dark outside, here's another way you could do it. If you have some sort of glass table, you can take a lamp and put it underneath and you have an instant light box. Check if you're using masking or painter's tape to mask a watercolor painting. If you put down tape straight from the roll onto your watercolor paper, you could be in trouble when you try to rip it off. It could end up picking up some of the paper and tearing your painting that you just worked so hard on. To avoid this, before you put the tape down, you should try to get some of that sticky icky off of the tape by first placing it on something else and taking it off. You could do this on a lot of things. You could put it on a table and rip it off. You could put it on your pants and rip it off. Um, just anything that you can put it on to make it less sticky before you apply it to your paper. But if I caught you too late and you put that fresh tape down, don't fret because I got a trick for you. Try using a blow dryer to heat up the tape before you try to peel it off. A little bit of heat will loosen up that adhesive, making it a breeze to peel right off. Have you ever been working on a drawing and you have a piece of it that you just can't get right? So you draw it and erase it and redraw it and erase it and it just muddies up the sheet of paper you were working on. If you find yourself having trouble, try grabbing another piece of paper and redrawing the piece that you can't get right. When you try to draw it fresh again, you might be able to get it right the first time and then you can take that and trace it back onto your original drawing without having to muddy up the paper the rest of the way. Alternatively, if you are drawing something, um, let's say a face and something's just slightly off, like the lips are a little bit too far to the right. What you can do is onto a new sheet of paper, trace the whole face you already drew minus the lip, and then you can move the original drawing underneath until you get the lips in the correct position and then trace the lips in the place they're supposed to be on your new drawing. So this one's more of like a tip for beginners. Um, this one is that if you have an artist that you really like, um, it could be a really good idea for you to try to recreate some of their drawings. Um, this gives you a chance to try to practice some of the techniques and uh, learn it yourself. And this will help you develop your technical skills more. Um, and then, you know, you can work on finding your own style as you improve your technical skills because it's a lot 
harder to stay encouraged when your art isn't where you want it to be yet. So this way you could just get better, but make sure to do your own original art in the future. Use this to get better technically, but make sure you continue to do your own original stuff in the future. Okay, so this one is a hack for trying to learn to draw something you've never really drawn before. For an example, I'm going to use um, something that I've learned to draw was a uh, tattoo style rose. When I first started trying to get into tattoo style art, uh, I had no idea what I was doing and uh, one of the first most obvious things to me seemed that I would try to learn a tattoo rose. So I was able to teach myself to draw tattoo style roses from memory within about a week. The way I did this was I just went onto Google and I just went Google image search, uh, tattoo style roses, old school roses, traditional, you know, different ways to search it and just looked at a ton of different uh, tattoo rose reference pictures and whipped out my sketchbook and just started trying to quickly redraw every rose that I saw. I would probably spend like five to ten minutes maximum on each sketch and I would draw like, you know, five or six on a page, just draw one and then move on to the next one and just keep doing that over and over again for about an hour, sometimes two hours at a time. Um, and I did this for about uh, a week, it was like maybe five or six days. Um, and by the end of that time, I was able to draw uh, tattoo roses from memory because I couldn't even close my eyes without seeing them. They were burned into my brain. So um, it's a really good way to learn to draw uh, simple things. It would probably work really well for things like skulls or eyes or, um, you know, even noses, lips, small parts of faces. Um, I wouldn't say you'd be able to teach yourself how to draw a human face from memory perfectly within a week, but you could definitely learn how to draw certain things um, within a week if you just keep drawing them over and over again. So here's a trick for if you're trying to draw from a reference picture. You should try to visualize your reference as shapes. And if you can't visualize it in your head, it's always helpful to draw directly on your reference picture. If you add shapes to your reference picture, it may make it a lot easier for you to redraw it. And keeping your reference picture up next to your drawing is always helpful as well. That way you can see if you've made any mistakes. I suggested in my last art hack video that if you're looking at your piece and something feels a little off but you can't quite figure out what it is, that you can flip it over to get an outside perspective. Well, there's even some more tricks you can do to see if you can figure out what's wrong with your painting. One way, which was suggested in the comments of my other video, was that you can take it up to a mirror. By flipping it in the mirror, you're going to be able to point out things that you wouldn't have noticed when it was facing the correct direction. Another trick you could do is just simply by getting up and standing a few feet away from your piece. Uh, by doing that, um, you'll be able to see the composition from further away and um, it will look a bit different and you might be able to point out some errors that you weren't noticing before. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, move on to some drawing hacks, tips and tricks. Um, these are mainly for pencil or colored pencil drawing. Have you ever sat just sharpening a pencil for what feels like forever and you can't get it to that pointy perfect sharp tip? Well, I have a way to keep your pencils super sharp when you need them to be. The best way to do this is with a piece of sandpaper or one of those um, cardboard nail files. Uh, you could just sharpen your pencil to a real nice tip and it'll be pointy and perfect for what you need it for. And if you don't have sandpaper, you can still get the same results from scrap paper. It just might take a little bit longer. So another trick from my original art hack video was to use toilet paper or Kleenex for blending for pencil drawings. Well, you can also make a DIY blending stump with just a sheet of paper. All you gotta do is keep folding a sheet of paper over and over until you get a nice corner and it will blend for you just as well as a blending stump. So here's another one that might be kind of obvious to some people. Um, but I didn't really notice this until I started filming YouTube videos um, when I got my art desk um, that is a very hard surface. I used to do most of my drawings just in a sketchbook or, or I would use like the back of my sketch pad as a surface to draw on. And um, it turns out it's a lot better to draw on a very hard surface, uh, a glass table, any sort of drawing table, 
Um, there's drawing boards uh, specifically for artists. The reason for this is because when you're drawing in a sketch pad, especially with pencil and you push hard, it's going to leave an indent in the page. And that's just gonna make it really hard to either erase or really hard to blend over. And it can even damage pages underneath if you're drawing in a sketchbook. So I suggest if you're gonna do a pencil drawing, especially if it's gonna be for like a final piece that you might possibly sell, uh, you should definitely do it on a hard surface. It's gonna just work out a lot better. This one logically is like super obvious, but um, a lot of people don't really think about it. So if you are having a hard time with your drawing because your hand keeps smudging it as you go across it, it is as simple as this. If you're right-handed, draw from left to right. If you're left-handed, draw from right to left. So if you're right-handed and you complete everything on the left side of your hand, there's no way for you to smudge what's under the right side. And this is a great trick for people who have the patience to work on a piece from one side to the other. Uh, me, however, I'm super, super ADD about uh, stuff like that. I can't just work on one little part. I gotta be all over the place. So if you're like me and you can't just work on uh, one part at a time, there's another trick that can save you from smudging your paper and it's really simple just take a sheet of computer paper and place it under your hand and you will cease to smudge it uh, you also can wear um, latex gloves um, you can also wear gloves and cut the fingers off uh, but for me I think the best way has always been just a sheet of computer paper and good to go this is a tip for people who are just starting to get into portrait drawing using reference photos if you work really hard on a portrait drawing and just the eye is off by a little bit or the nose is uh, up too high or the lips are too low just the slightest little thing can put off the entire rest of the drawing you won't be able to get the shading right because something's off and you can never look make it look exactly like the reference photo um so for beginner pencil artists a lot of the hardest part is putting everything in the right place this in turn can make it very discouraging to get into pencil drawing because it's just so difficult to get everything in the right place and then it's impossible to make the shading look good if everything's not in place to begin with. So for um, people starting to get into pencil arts, I think it's a really good trick to try to trace the drawing and then fill in the shading just to practice your shading. I think you'd be really, really surprised with what you can accomplish with your shading. Shading is a lot easier than the actual drawing part of it mapping everything out I, at least for me is always the hardest part um because like i said if you don't get perfect it ruins all the shading so if you practice uh by lightly tracing your reference photo and then shading it in you might be able to surprise yourself and that will motivate you to be able to learn the correct way to draw a face um just to know that you do have the potential to do beautiful realistic shading this is a tip that most people will probably know um, if you went to you know art classes in school um, a lot of people aren't lucky enough to have art classes in school so I figured I would include this just in case um, if you're trying to get into pencil drawing and you're only using an HB standard pencil um, like a school pencil you need to check out all of the different pencil hardnesses because uh, there's hard to soft lead and depending on the lead you get uh, lighter and darker pencil shades. The really hard lead are all the H pencils and those are really light in tone but they don't blend very well and then it goes down to B pencils where they have a softer lead and they're very dark. So if you've never tried using um, a full pencil set you should definitely check it out. You can get them super cheap from pretty much anywhere if you buy a basic brand. Yeah, if you're trying to learn pencil drawing, definitely check out all the different pencil hardnesses and give them a shot. Here's a trick for when you're doing pencil shading. Try holding the pencil a different way. When you're shading, you should lay the lead flat on its side and you can cover a much larger area. It's important to try different techniques when you're holding pencils. As you can see from this demonstration, you can cover a much larger area in a shorter amount of time when you're holding the pencil at a different angle. Here's a trick I picked up when I got my first set of Prismacolor colored pencils. So anyone who has Prismacolor colored pencils will tell you that the lead breaks so easily when you try to sharpen them and it is just a nightmare because they are so expensive. So I had to figure out quick a way to save myself from just sharpening through half a pencil 
to get a sharp tip. So this is the way I always thought you're supposed to sharpen a pencil. Isn't that the way everybody does it? You put it in from the side and you just sharpen. Nope, it's wrong. When you do this, your wrist is flicking every time you turn and that is causing your lead to get on a slight angle just enough for it to break the lead for these super delicate Prismacolors. So the correct way to sharpen a Prismacolor color pencil is to do it like this and that way you're not flicking your wrist and making it break the lead. Okay, so now I'm going to be moving on to some painting hacks uh, specifically for watercolors and acrylic paint because I don't work with oils but hopefully these will be helpful for people who use watercolors and acrylic paints. So once I figured this one out it probably made my life like a million times easier. You can save your mixed acrylic paint. Have you ever spent forever mixing that perfect acrylic color to work on your painting and then oh no I have to run I have to do something I can't finish this right now I mixed up all this paint and now it's all gonna go to waste and I didn't even finish the part I was working on how am I gonna ever get that color mixed perfectly again Ugh, what do I do well good news you can actually save your acrylic paint if you put it in an airtight container um, if you put it in an airtight container like a Tupperware, you can save it for a day or two without it getting hard. If it does get a little bit hard, don't forget to check. You can pull off the top of that dry acrylic paint and there could still be a nice big glob of wet paint under there. So um, don't forget to check for a little hidden reservoir gold mine of wet paint. And also, if you put a little piece of wet paper towel and then put it in a fridge in an airtight container, it can last as long as one to two weeks. Um, so yeah, that's, that's super helpful for me. Um, I actually found this out because I had gone to Hobby Lobby and bought a professional airtight acrylic container, which I didn't even know that existed until I saw it. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, you could do it with Tupperware as well. You don't have to spend, I spent like 30, 40 bucks on it. If I would have known I could just use a Tupperware, I could have saved myself even more. So have you ever left your wooden paintbrush in the water too long and then the inevitable happens and the metal part comes off the wooden part and you're like, oh no, gotta throw this paintbrush out now. Well, guess what? Don't throw it out. You can still salvage it. This is something I figured out because this used to happen to me all the time because uh, I would leave my paintbrushes in the water just sitting in there and the, the wood would start to warp and the metal part would just wiggle right off. Don't throw it out because you might be able to fix it. Um, you could put a piece of glue and just glue it on, but there's a way easier way to even do that. You could just stick it right back on and then find something to pinch it in with. So it's on the wood. You want to pinch the metal in on the part where the wood is. And if you pinch it in nice, it'll stay on there. I've fixed so many paintbrushes this way. And here's another good hack for watercolor painters. Um, try using two separate water cups when you're rinsing out your brushes. It will make it way easier because you won't have to make as many trips to get clean water. You just use the first cup of water to get most of the paint off and that'll be your mucky paint water. So you'll have a fairly clean brush to put into the second cup of water. This will keep that second cup of water fairly clean and will allow you to continue painting with clean water without having to get up every five minutes to get new water. So here are some hacks you can use to add more texture to your watercolor paintings. Um, you can do some really cool watercolor washes and use these techniques to add just a bunch of really interesting textures to it. One of the ones that I use a lot is that just you can do a, a watercolor wash and then just use a paper towel to just pick up little pieces. You could also use a sponge and that will give you a nice texture. Um, another thing that you can do is you can take salt and put it over your wet watercolors and this will cause the pigments to sort of go towards the salt and it will uh, create this interesting texture. And as soon as it's dry, you can wipe all that salt right off. It'll brush right off. Um, you can also take a squirt bottle uh, and put water or rubbing alcohol and just spray little mists of spray over your wet watercolors. That will give you an interesting effect as well. Um, and another cool one is you can take just crumpled up paper and put it on your painting and then allow it to dry. And then once you remove the paper from the painting, you'll have a really cool crumpled uh, texture. So you'll have a lot of really cool textures you can work with. 
So this one's a really, really good trick when you want to paint straight lines. Um, painting straight lines can be so hard with a paintbrush if you want to do really long, even straight lines. Um, so what you can actually use to do this is use a pizza cutter. You can dip the pizza cutter in the paint and very gently roll it across the painting to get a perfect straight line every time. Here's another cool art hack that you can do with just cardboard. I needed a table easel to work on one of my acrylic paintings for a video and I didn't have one so I decided to build one out of cardboard. So you can see how I did this in this video. I took um, a few pieces of cardboard and I bent them using a sharpie to push down in the ridges and then I put them together with tape. Um, the way I folded them ended up working out really well to make a DIY easel. This was something I just kind of figured out out of necessity one day when I needed um, a table easel. It's not very heavy duty or anything, but it's not fragile either. Um, as long as you put enough tape on there to hold everything in place, it will make a perfect easel for if you have nothing else to work with. And it's super convenient because almost everybody has an old cardboard box lying around somewhere in their house that they could cut up with a box cutter to make this. But for best results, you can use a fresh cardboard box. Um, it'll just work much better because it's so sturdy and not bent. And here it is, all finished. Okay, so now on to the last part of my video, just some general artist tips. So here's one that, you know, most people know about, but there are a couple people out there who might not. So if you did not know, if you go to Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's Art Supplies, or Joann's Fabrics, make sure you go to their website and download their 40% off one item coupon. They always have a 40% off one item coupon. Um, I know for sure Hobby Lobby and Michaels always do, and Joann's I'm pretty sure does too, but uh, definitely Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Um, also, they have tons and tons of amazing sales. I've gotten canvases for as low as $2 a piece for uh, 16 by 20 canvases at Michaels um, during their sales. Um, just always check out the sales. They normally rotate on a bi-weekly basis. So if you miss something one week, they'll probably have it again in a couple of weeks. Just always keep an eye on that because you can get such great deals from those stores as long as you use the coupon. Here's a tip for people who aren't using the best lighting. It's really, really important to use good, bright lighting when you're working on your piece. Also, you should not use yellow light lamps like those regular house lights. What you should really look into is natural lighting. If you cannot use sunlight to draw, you should use natural lighting or white light. You can really see the difference in the beginning of this video. I was using incandescent bulbs and then it switches to where I'm using the natural white lighting bulbs and it just makes so much of a difference. It will allow you to make your paintings and drawings the way that they will look when you see them in the sunlight. You can get Archival Quality Sealing Spray that you can spray on your paintings and drawings to make them uh, stand up against sunlight a lot better and make them last a lot longer overall. I always spray my watercolor paintings with a sealer. If you aren't using the best quality art supplies, adding an Archival Quality Sealer will extend your painting's life a lot longer. This is a trick that I've been using for years and years and years and it's so you don't get artist block and never get bored. Try to always work on more than one painting at once. I normally try to work on three or four different paintings at once. And I don't mean like all at once, all in front of you. But you know, uh, if you're waiting for one painting to dry, you can then move it over and start working on a different painting. It makes it so it's easy to never get bored and always have something to work on if you get blocked on one piece. You should always keep a sketchbook with you at all times. I like to keep a little mini travel sketchbook in my purse with a mechanical pencil because they're my favorite. <laughs> There's also a bunch of great apps for your phone where you can have a sketch pad wherever you are because you never know when inspiration is going to strike. Even if you don't have time to draw, it's great to have even to just take down notes. I always come up with ideas that I would probably forget if I didn't write them down in my sketchbook. Here's another tip for the artists on the go. If you plan on transporting a piece that you've been working on that's a, a little bit larger and you're worried about it getting bent, you can make a DIY cardboard folder to keep it in. To do this, simply cut out two pieces of cardboard that are slightly larger than your piece. You can do this for larger pieces as well. I just did a smaller one for the sake of the video, 
but basically um, you take your pieces of cardboard and you're gonna take a piece of tape and tape the two pieces of cardboard together in the middle make sure your piece fits inside and then take another strip of tape and put it from the top of one end to the other and fold it over to make a little flap so you can remove it later I also always add another strip of tape across the bottom where the um, original tape was on the opposite side just to make it extra tight so your painting doesn't fall out. Okay guys, so that's all the art hacks, tips, and tricks I got in this video for you today. Um, I want to say thank you so much for checking out my video and if you'd like to see more art videos, uh, be sure to take a stop by my channel. Also be sure to leave a comment to let me know what you thought. And um, yeah, so thanks so much you guys and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, keep it up, keep drawing and uh, toodles.